thank you all for joining together on Holy Innocence Day 2023. This is the part of the Christmas story that is usually forgotten. Amidst all the tinsel and razzmatazz of Christmas and New Year, people don't want to stop to think about the reality of what the Holy Innocents experienced and their families over 2,000 years ago. Today, we will remember families experiencing similar things, sadly. For many years, the Network of Christian Peace Organizations in the UK held a service on Holy Innocence Day at St. Martin in the Fields. And then we processed to Westminster Abbey to this, the memorial to all innocent victims of oppression, violence, and war. And we do that virtually today. And we especially remember the children. Uh, this is the current mural at St John's Episcopal Church at the west end of Princess Street in, in Edinburgh. They're uh, well known for uh, their murals. And certainly the background buildings, uh, women in black hijab says Palestine or Gaza to me. But of course, as Sue has said, we'll hear tonight about the massacre of many other innocents. It's estimated that around 8,000 and counting uh, children have been killed in Gaza since the 7th of October. We hear harrowing stories of families sheltering in one room in the hope, well, if you can call it hope, that they will at least all be killed together. Many children have been left with no, have survived, but have been left with, with no family. And among the, the small Christian community in Gaza, which uh, has not been spared the, the bombings, and particularly among the Orthodox, people have been rushing to have their children baptised so that if they die, they will at least be assured of going to heaven. At church today, a, a line in the gospel reading jumped out at me. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem. He was infuriated. Revenge, vengeance. We've gathered here tonight or in our homes to pray for a miraculous de-escalation of the fighting. And we pray that reason will overcome rage and revenge. Thank you, Jen. David is going to read for us the colic for Holy Innocence Day. Receive, we pray, into the arms of your mercy, all innocent victims, and by your great might, frustrate designs of evil tyrants, and establish your rule of justice, love, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Arthur is now going to read Matthew chapter 2 for us. It is a long reading, but we felt we should have the full one. Arthur. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for well, this is what the prophets had written. But you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realised that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old or under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I'd like to ask Malcolm Geit if he will introduce his sonnet. Epiphany is over. The kings have set off home another way. But their arrival has triggered an appalling chain of events. Herod then as now thinks nothing of killing the innocent for political ends. The Christ child is a refugee in the world he came to save. But God who gives himself for us all also calls us all to give an account to him of how we have lived and loved in that world. Refugee. We think of him as <clears throat> safe beneath the steeple or cosy in a crib beside the font. But he is with a million displaced people on the long road of weariness and want. For even as we sing our final carol, his family is up and on that road, fleeing the wrath of someone else's quarrel, glancing behind and shouldering their load. Whilst Herod rages still from his dark tower, Christ clings to Mary, fingers tightly curled. The lambs are slaughtered by the men of power, and death squads spread their curse across the world. But every Herod dies and comes alone to stand before the lamb upon the throne. Thank you, Malcolm. Now, of course, there was only one carol we could use today, 
And I'd now like to ask Sue if she will sing it for us. This carol came about when the Coventry mystery plays were no longer uh, popular, but this uh, song was part of it. So the origins go back to medieval Coventry. Sue. Yes. Yes, I have got 15th century written on my copy oh, here. Right. So even though muted, please sing with me if you <clears throat> if you want to. Sue. Now, I'd like to ask David Seltzer to tell us a little bit about the residential schools in Canada. Thank you, Sue. I cannot forget that on all of the Feast of the Holy Innocents that um, here in Canada and, and other places around the world, young children who were um, killed, who were transformed, um, who were stripped of their language, their culture, their mm -hmm. religion, and forcibly made Christians um, by the combination in Canada of the federal government and the churches, Anglican, Roman Catholic, Presbyterian, and the churches that now make up the United Church of Canada. And each of the residential schools were given their charge to transform Indigenous children into Western children by changing their language, their culture, refusing many of them uh, the freedom to go home. And in many, many cases on our reservations today, um, when these children died, many from abuse. They were buried in what is now known as unmarked graves, which are still being uncovered. We remember those children, and we remember those children who survived, who had their lives forever changed and transformed, even to this day. The last of the residential schools in Canada didn't close until 1960, after 100 plus years of operation, which was purposely to take the, quote, Indian out of the child and make them, quote, a human being. We pray, God of our ancestors, who holds the spirit of our grandmothers and grandfathers and the spirits of our grandchildren, remember the children. We now pledge ourselves to speak the truth and with our hearts and our souls to act upon the truth we have heard of the injustices lived, of the sufferings inflicted, of the tears cried, 
of the misguided intentions imposed and of the power of prejudice and racism which were allowed to smother the sounds and laughter of the forgotten children. And to this we say, Amen. Now I'd like to ask David Mykoff if he will read this prayer for us. Heavenly Father, so many children suffered as Herod killed them, though they did not commit any mistake. Please defeat all evil designs and let all little ones be safe. Establish your reign of peace and justice through our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. He reigns with you and is alive. Amen. Now, Many of you will have heard snippets of the war in the Sudan, which has been raging since the 15th of April. But on the 19th of December, the Rapid Support Force, which is one of the two, the other being the army, two uh, combatants in this war, captured Wad Madani, the second largest city after Khartoum. In the video we're going to see in a minute, the British journalist Owen Jones interviews Dalala Abdilomian, and she explains what the situation in Sudan is. This was recorded on the 20th of December, and she makes specifically references to the children of Sudan. Give an example, okay. Um, some nearly 500,000 people from Khartoum sought refuge in Madani. And now all those people in Madani are seeking refuge elsewhere. We had until last week, we had the largest displacement of people in the world. We were 7.8 million people displaced. With what's happening now, that's going to increase. We have the largest number of displaced children in the world whose education has, has been halted, who have no access to health care, who have no access to security. 65% of those displaced are made up of women who are the most vulnerable. And there were, there were girls, Sudanese girls, asking what are the protocols for rape, the, the date, the date, the, the, the rape kit. What medication do they need? Because they've already set themselves up into believing, into know, into thinking and knowing that they could be next. They will be raped and they don't want to fall pregnant from that rape. So what can they do? I can't imagine how any girl or any person is thinking like that because you're trying to stay safe, you're trying to escape, and they're not allowing people to leave Madani. Yeah. They're trying to stay safe for, to protect yeah. themselves, their parents, their loved ones, and it's just... It's just a nightmare. It's, it's, I mean, every day I'm getting messages from people asking me, can you help this person? This person needs safety. This per and I don't know what to do. We don't know what to do because there's no, like I said, there's no communication. It's very hard to reach people. And it's just, it's going to get worse. It's not going to get, it's not going to get any better. It is going to get absolutely much, much worse and no help is coming. We've been helping ourselves for so long the local resistance committees, the local organizations and grassroots and emergency responders, but they're stretched thin because they're also targets. So. It's just beyond hideous. Um, in terms of what needs to be done, what what's the kind of call, what are the demands that people need to be to heed? What can people listening do? But what would you like now in terms of how we address this? Absolute? This war needs to stop. The, the world, it just has to stop because, I mean, the devastation already that's occurred from the war, it will not be fixed over overnight. It will take years, if not decades, but the war needs to stop right now. Pressure, real pressure needs to be brought on both sides, the army and the RSF. They need to be sanctioned and they need to be sanctioned immediately. You sanction the top tier. Don't sanction the lower people. Like sanction the ones who are giving the orders for all this, for this killing, for these massacres. You know, I've, I've read so many statements from international organizations, from, you know, 
the, United, the American State Department, the British Foreign Ministry, the EU, but their statements, they do nothing. I'm tired of hearing, we condemn, we call upon, we ask. They're not listening to you. If you really want to do something, something can be done. You know, we've been shouting about this, have this scenario happening since 2018, but no one listened to us. We, the Sudanese people, we were going out in protests, we were holding seminars, we were taught, we were screaming. You cannot legitimize this entity. You need to listen to us. No one did. If you would like to hear the whole of that, uh, video recording. It is on the APF Facebook page. I would now like to ask Jan and Ruth if they'll read our litany. Let us look deeply into the heart of our world where there is hunger and disease, conflict and despair. We have eyes to see. Let us see. Let us listen to the children's cries of distress, even though their voices are weak. We have ears to hear. Let us hear. Let us stand beside the poor of the world and join with them in their journey. We have feet to walk. Let us walk. Let us give generously with our strength and all that we have. We have hands to work. Let us work. Let us cry out to the powerful that we will not accept the injustice. We have tongues to speak. Let us speak. Let us grieve with the parents as they watch their children die and feel their pain. We have hearts to love. Let us love. And I'd now like Sue to introduce this carol. I wrote this some years ago. Um, Away in a Manger is so much loved and sung by all kinds of people at Christmas. And it can get, of course, it's quite sentimental. And something made me think, well, that's Away in a Manger. What about Away from the Manger? And I wrote it for Holy Innocents Day uh, some years ago to be sung in St. Martin in the Fields. And uh, I'd like to bring it to you now because of all the things we've been hearing about and to apply it to, to those things. And if you pick up the tune as I go along, I do come back to the last verse of the carol so you can sing it with me um, when we get there.
The cattle are lucky, they don't live in fear. They'll cry in the night when there's no one to hear. Or think someone loves them and find they were wrong. Or pay with their pain for the sins of the strong. We need you, Lord Jesus, in weakness revealed, to show how the wounds of our world can be healed. And children and women and men come to know the worth that we gain from the And now I'd like Ruth to share this next prayer with us. O oh God, whom the holy innocents confessed and proclaimed on this day, not by speaking, but by dying, grant, we pray, that the faith in you, which we confess with our lips, may also speak through our manner of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we will finish our prayers today with a prayer that APF has been using since March 2022. And I hope gives us the hope that we all struggle to maintain. Jan. Holy God. Open our eyes to a fresh vision of a peaceful world. Along with the will to seek alternatives to revenge and violence. Awaken in us compassion for the victims of war. Soldiers of all nations, grieving families, civilians, the wounded creation. Open wide the eyes of world leaders, especially in our own countries, to see a path towards peace between Ukraine and Russia, Palestine and Israel, Sudan, Yemen, Syria, and in all conflicts that tear apart the one human family. Grant us eyes wide open to peace. Amen. And together we will pray and work to make sure that the words of this prayer to seek alternatives to revenge and violence and to work for that fresh vision of a peaceful world may come about.